Today I had the opportunity to present the results of the small study called uh, Splenchnik Nerve Block for Acute Heart Failure. The study was intended to test a new concept in heart failure decompensation. The current concept of heart failure decompensation primarily emphasizes that fluid overload leads to cardiac decompensation from a chronic to an acute state. However, there are some problems with that concept. Once, uh, there are uh, a lot of patients, about 50% of patients, do not experience any weight gain prior to a heart failure hospitalization. At the same time, patients that do experience heart failure decompensation often see pressure elevations weeks and weeks prior to the heart failure decompensation without any parallel weight gain. So that suggests that simply assuming that a fluid overload causes cardiac decompensation does not apply to a majority of the population. There's a new concept that has been proposed by us and others uh, that suggests that fluid that comes extra is not externally gained, but actually a redistribution out of the abdomen going to the chest. And that concept can be um, conceptualized by the fact that the splenchnik vascular compartment is the largest storage compartment in the human body. It's innervated by the so-called splenchnik nerves and stores 40% of the total blood volume. In heart failure patients, that compartment is small and constricted and cannot host any additional fluid. So what happens is that fluid that's supposed to be stored in the belly probably is now translocated into the chest. The result is cardiac decompensation and cardiopulmonary symptoms. So we found the target nerve that could be targeted to reduce cardiac decompensation by opening up the splenchnik vascular compartment. So the splenchic, uh, greater splenchnik nerve was the primary target. It carries the majority of splenchnik nerves. It um, is located uh, in the back of the spine, traveling to the front. We have uh, identified a procedure called the splenchnik nerve block, where we perform a bilateral procedure, injected lidocaine on both sides, and we're able to block that nerve for a short duration of time, 90 minutes. So we have found five patients that we performed the procedure on. Uh, as a result of this procedure, we have seen that there was first an acute drop in intracardiac filling pressures, meaning the mean PA pressure, the wedge pressure dropped precipitately, precipitously with a peak effect at 30 minutes after the nerve block and a slow recovery in pressures as the drug was wearing out towards the nine minute mark. Parallel, there was an increase in cardiac index from 1.9 to 2.5 with a peak effect at 30 minutes again. And again, at 90 minutes, that effect was weaning off as the drug was wearing off. So in conclusion, um, maybe before conclusion, patients also had an improvement in symptoms um, and uh, an improvement in six-month walk distance. Given the small number, those were not statistically significant, but all showed a right trend. Similarly, the biomarker profile was very uh, favorable suggesting that there was less catecholamines, uh, less vascular stiffness uh, across the abdomen and the splenchic compartment following the nerve block. So all supporting the concept that this nerve block could be used to treat patients with acute heart failure. So in conclusion, this was actually the first in man uh, proof of concept study showing that there is some merit to the efficacy and safety of the splenchic nerve block in patients with acute heart failure. Thank you very much.